probability, we have something called the binomial probability distribution that often um, surfaces when doing those types of problems. And they also lead into our work with our population proportion later on down the road. So it's important to get a foundation of the binomial probability distribution and seeing some examples of it. Now with the binomial probability type problems, there's certain aspects that you need to look for. First, within each trial, you have either a success or failure situation that can occur. So a lot of times this is like a characteristic that uh, something has or it doesn't have. Second, there has to be a fixed number of repeated independent trials that you have. So you have a specific number of trials that you go through. Third, you have to have a probability of success that is at the same in each individual trial. And then fourth, the trials have to be independent of each other. And when I see that happens, and the question asks me for the probability of a certain number of successes out of so many trials, then that's telling me that it's a binomial probability distribution type problem. So in this problem that I've stated on the board, in the United States, 40% of the population have brown eyes. If 12 people are selected at random, find, and then there's three different probability questions here. So I have a success or failure situation that's occurring. Someone either has brown eyes or they don't have brown eyes. I have a fixed number of repeated trials. We're looking at 12 people. So there's 12 repeated trials that we have. These are independent of each other because we're selecting the people at random that we're looking to see what their eye color is. So they're independent. And I have this probability of success of 0 0.40 in each individual trial. So this has the components that it needs to be a binomial probability type problem. So now when I'm looking at the first part of the question, I still want to make sure that it is a binomial problem by also the way the question is asked. And it says, find the probability that seven have brown eyes. So I want seven successes out of the 12 trials. So when I'm looking at the probability type um, solutions that I can give for this, I can either get the solution by following the formula and running the numbers from the problem through the formula, or by using a calculator and going into the second VARS, which is the distribution key if you're using like a TI-83 or a TI-84 type calculator. And under that heading, if you use cursor down, you'll see binomial PDF and binomial CDF. These are the operations under that menu that are giving probabilities for binomial probability type questions. And PDF is a, it's a specific number of successes out of so many trials. And CDF, if it's a cumulative number of successes or probability that's cumulative from the number of successes of zero successes, one successes, leading up to whatever you put in the um, list under your binomial CDF. So let's first look at part A. It's the probability that exactly seven have brown eyes out of the 12 people that you look at knowing that you're randomly selecting them from a population that has 40% of the population having brown eyes. So from the formula for part A, what we're going to calculate, our probability of our seven successes will be, N is the number of trials, we have 12 trials, so 12 factorial, X is the number of successes we're interested in getting, so that's seven factorial, times the quantity 12 minus 7 in parentheses factorial, and then times p to the x, p, small case p, is your probability of success within a trial. So that's our 0 0.40 to the power of the number of successes we're looking for, 7. And then q, q is 1 minus p. So that's the percentage of the population that do not have brown eyes. So here, 1 minus 0.4 is 0.6. So 0 0.60 to the n minus x. So if I have 7 people that have brown eyes out of the 12 people I looked at, 12 minus 7, or 5 of them, would not have brown eyes. So 0 0.6 to the fifth power there. Now if you calculate this out, you'll get a value that's approximately 0.101. So you'll run this through your calculator with your factorial notation, 
um, or out by hand. And just remember that in the parentheses here, we subtract 12, subtract 7 to get a 5 factorial down there. And also, when I'm calculating this fraction, if you're going to do it all in a string in your calculator, you need to open a parentheses at the beginning of this fraction bar, do your calculations, close the parentheses before you go on to the rest of that calculation. So you want to calculate that through and make sure that you get that same decimal value for part A's answer. Now, if I was doing this with my calculator, I would do the binomial PDF option because it's a particular number of successes, and my n is my number of trials, my p is the probability of success within a trial, and my r is the number of successes I'm interested in for that problem. So for here, I go binomial PDF of 12, comma, 0.4, comma, 7, and that will still give me that same probability answer. Now in part b, we want the probability that at least one person has brown eyes out of the 12 that we look at. Well, we would need to individually calculate the probability of one person having brown eyes or two people having brown eyes or three people having brown eyes all the way up. And remember when you're doing compound probabilities with or in between, you would add each of those individual probabilities. Um, because remember, at least, if you say that I'm going to need at least um, $10 an hour in a job, and someone says, well, how about nine? You'd say, no, I said at least 10, so 10 or more. So when it says at least one, it means one or more. Now, that would be a lot of calculations. Um, so we can also come in at this in terms of the complement of the event. And the complement of the event would be all the other situations that's not that. With number of successes, at least one would be one success all the way up to the 12 successes. The only thing that we aren't accounting for there is if I have zero successes. So I could find the probability of at least one by taking one and subtracting from of it the probability of zero successes. And that saves me a lot of work in the calculations if I'm using the formula for it. So here then, I have my 1 minus, running the zero successes through my formula, I have 12 factorial for my n factorial, over 0 factorial times the quantity 12 minus 0 factorial, times my probability of success, 0.4 to the 0 power, and my probability of failure, 0.6 to the 12th power. And when you calculate this component and take 1 and subtract that number, you should get a value that's about 0.998 for that probability. And part C, the last one, the probability that I have no more than 5 people that have brown eyes, so if it's no more than 5 people that have brown eyes, then it would be 0 or 1 or 2, or 3, or 4, or 5, but I can't go any bigger than 5. So I want to take the probability that no people have brown eyes, plus the probability that one person does, plus the probability that two people do, plus all the way up to the probability that five people have brown eyes, and that's my probability of no more than 5. But notice this is adding up from the zero successes all the way up to five successes, and that's what the cumulative option on my um, calculator menu screen would do. It adds up the number of zero successes all the way up to what you have for your final number in here. So this will be binomial CDF, if I'm allowed to use that option on my calculator, of N is the number of trials, 12, comma, P is the probability of success within a trial, so that's my 0.4, comma, R is the number of successes in the cumulative that you're allowing that you stop at, so that would be 5. And when you put that in and you get the approximation, you, could, you should get about 0.665 for that probability. 
Now, just as a mnemonic device in terms of remembering what order you put this into your calculator and remembering to put the commas between, NPR is how it goes. So you can just think of the broadcasting system, the National Public Radio, as a memory device to remember that the input after the binomial, either PDF or CDF, is N for the number of trials, P for the probability of success within a trial, and R for the number of successes that you're interested in, whether it's the specific one or for the um, binomial PDF or the one that you stop at when you're accumulating the probabilities of number of successes all the way up to your top out number if it's the binomial CDF option.